It is fascinating how we develop relationships with people and here I'm referring to all forms of relationship be it one with the family, the children, the community, our friends and so on. And it feels like the most natural thing to do when we connect or interact with others. Now it could be a stranger or it could be with people we have known all our life. And like all relationships, there is a back and forth, responses and reactions. Now the quality of our relationships are linked to several factors and they are well analyzed in our modern day psychology literature. Now few of the factors, they draw focus on the contents of our lives such as our past trauma, our childhood experiences, our background to explain why we behave the way we behave with others. However, for this video, I'm going to take like a step back from the contents of our life and to explore the structure of our experience or our perception of the world to shed more light on the quality of relationships. Now the word perception comes from the Latin word percipio, meaning observing or understanding. I write about the process of perception in detail in my upcoming book, Inside Framework. Here I will cover it very briefly. I refer to Jean Piaget, a Swiss psychologist who was recognized for his work on child development. His research, which is fascinating to read, is very relatable to our experience of growing up. The research method involved observing his own children closely as infants to map out their cognitive development. I'm just going to touch upon his theory here. Now, the infant experiences the world very differently from the adults, as he, she or they has not yet distinguished himself from what is within and outside of him. He experiences everything in totality as a flux of sensations, perceptions, sounds and so on. Now, P.A.J. points out that the infants do have intrinsic functional reflex for food, suckling, but the experience of the need for action develops by identifying various objects in the world and attributing different experiences to them. Now, the notion of time and space also builds up gradually. When he realizes in his movements, he can always return to a point. Now, he starts to perceive these objects, places to be permanently existing and starts making a clear distinction between himself and the world. Now, at this crucial step, he develops the ability to create a mental image as a map of the real world. Now, this image covers all the objects and distinctions between himself. And before long, the child will take this mental map as equivalent to reality. This habit is only intensified with each new experience as once the images are formed, it enters into all immediate perception and merges with the whole of the experience. It is the image making process that interferes with how we perceive anything because how we see something depends on what we know about it. In our relationships with people, we create these images in our mind about them and how we see them becomes very fixed. He or she is so and so person and these are her attributes and so on. We moreover have an image of ourselves that we are constantly reinforcing with others instead of being as we are. I like to use the example of a banana. Every banana in our kitchen is unique. It has some thoughts, the shape could be unique, the color and so on. And we can abstract it as an image in our mind, but it can never be an accurate description of the real banana because the description cannot replace the real thing we are describing. So does the abstraction of individuals in our minds, like the image here, is all but a scanned representation of the real person?
and when we interact with others are we connecting with them or the images we have of them in our mind i've had numerous such experiences and i'm sure many of you as well because of the way one looks people assume many things about you without really knowing you at all in addition in their interactions they enforce the image they have of you and vice versa essentially we never meet the real person we do need the image making process which act like maps for us to function in the world but do we need to extend this process to all the areas of our life is the question now the images we build about ourselves or another person in our head are an impediment to say the least it is more over the area where our biases our stereotypes assumptions all play out because either based on our experience or the apparent physical features of skin tone race religious allegiance we develop standard images of people and many of our relationships with others could solely be a play of such images it may not represent the person you're really interacting with we do this to ourselves for example if disliking an artist like daft punk hard to dislike i guess is viewed as say uncool among our peer groups we may convince ourselves that we need to like this artist then we tend to construct an image of ourselves with all our cool attributes and also of others to then live a life far far away from reality while it seems very tempting to do this image making process is one of the reason we can't seem to experience genuine relationships with each other most of our actions are in reaction to the image we have and not to the reality and some day someone pokes a hole in these images and our entire world collapses i have consciously tried to become aware of this process of image making of others in my mind and even stayed away from creating images of myself it has enabled me to perceive people as they are without formulating any conclusions about them it is like a core to core interaction another aspect here is people change all the time and the images we have of them are not an essential tool to carry and apply I always think about this quote by jiddu krishnamurthy but he said there is an art of seeing things as they are without naming without being caught in a network of words without thinking interfering with perception imagine tomorrow the world for whatever reasons declares you as a terrible person and Im- maintain that image all the time but you are changing and making amends but this image hangs over you every day and everyone is meeting you with it and not seeing you the real you that is changing that would be sad for anyone and a failing indeed of the world regardless our doing all humans genuinely seek happiness ask a poor man rich man a criminal a politician at the core they all want to be happy giving benefit of doubt goes a long way for anyone seeking to change do give it a go in your life and see if you have built images about yourself and others and how it gets in the way of real connection and if you drop these psychological images about yourself and others then what happens it may surprise you